What's up guys? I'm Laura from Reading in Bed and this is just going to be a bit of a catch-up video on the Man Booker International Prize because it's been a couple weeks. I did mean to sit down and film the video last week but it was one of those days where I just didn't want to put makeup on <laughs> so I didn't. So now we're going to catch up. Um, I've really been working pretty hard at the shortlist and uh, we are now what like two two and a half weeks away from the prize being announced so it's you know getting down to the wire here. So the first book I'll talk about is Frankenstein and Baghdad. This is the one where I intended to sit down and film a review. Um, didn't want to put makeup on that day so I sat down and wrote a review on my blog. And it's funny, when I film a review first I often still feel very energized to write something on my blog and it even helps me organize my thoughts so I can bang out the written review really quickly. But when I write a review first I feel like I'm done. I just, you know, I've said what I had to say and I, I don't want to like sit down and do a whole 10 or 15 minute video about the book but I really really like this so I just want to say like the main thing in my review um, I compared this book to American War which was up for Canada Reads this year obviously both these books have something to say about war and violence but this book leaves a lot of room a lot of space for the reader to come up with their own conclusions and to have their own thoughts whereas American War like just beats you on the head with all of the author's messages, which I hate. <laughs> so um, this book surprised me. I didn't know what to expect. It is very weird. It is one of the weirder books I've read, but in a, in a very accessible way. So I could see this winning the prize. Um, this is a book I think you could put in anyone's hand and they would be able to get something out of it. They would be able to get into it as opposed to some of the other books we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, so very accessible, but still very, um, very intelligent, very well written, uh, and very worthwhile. So I, I really, really enjoyed this book and I, I would be very happy to see it win. So I'll link to my written review if you would like to check that out. Um, the other shortlister that I've recently finished is The World Goes On by Laszlo Krasnokorhai. Um, and I don't know if I will get around to a full review, whether written or filmed, we'll see. But I just want to give a rebuttal uh, to a lot of the reviews I'm seeing that say this is not the right place to start with this author. They say you should start with his novels. If you start with this, this is going to be too weird, too out there, um, and it's going to kind of ruin your like first experience with this guy. But uh, I really couldn't disagree more. Um, I really enjoyed this book, and it's it's funny. Like I took it with me on a trip to Toronto last week, sort of ironically, like, oh yeah, won't it be funny to take this like weird surreal collection of short stories translate it from Hungarian that doesn't have any paragraph breaks or even sentence breaks because um, that's just like a funny book to take traveling it's not your typical travel book uh, and I thought oh I'll bring it but you know we'll see if I actually read it but I did I read it the entire plane trip to Toronto I dragged it with me to my conference to restaurants when I was going out for supper at night uh, always had it in my bag and I binged the end of it uh, at night in my hotel um, I even, like, with books that are kind of difficult in that, like I said, a lot of these stories, um, they're just like walls of text, just trying to find a good, yeah, so like, you know, there's no paragraph breaks, there's no sentence breaks. Um, so when I was sort of in my hotel room with this book, I read some of it out loud, which helps me when a book is just like really sort of impenetrable in that way. Uh, and I got so into one story that I was reading out loud by myself that when the phone rang, my husband was calling me, like I jumped, it startled me. Uh, and I got really into these stories. Yeah, they're totally weird, totally crazy. Um, there's one story that has like 17 blank pages in it like there's stuff like that right uh but i thought it was a great start because now that i know what he can do with a couple of pages i want to see what he can do with a novel um and uh yeah i mean some of the stories are super out there but i also liked how like as a collection it kind of builds from the the weirdest stories with really no character or plot or anything to latch onto at all to stories that have sort of more <laughs> things that the reader can grab onto uh towards the end we have um sort of like a non-fiction ish a story about uh, Yuri Gagarin, the first guy who went into space, and um, they, they just get more sort of grounded, I guess, in some sort of reality as they go on. So it, like, even though these stories were all published at different times, they work together as a collection. And yeah, they're totally fucking crazy, but um, yeah, I would say, and I mean, look at how pretty, right? So this is a fine place to start, in my opinion. Give it a try. Um, 
Okay, the other one I am in the middle of that is on a Kindle, so I'm not going to bother showing it, is like a fading shadow. That is a weird... It's sort of a mix of memoir and like a fictionalized account of the guy who assassinated Martin Luther King. And it is a bit of like writers writing about writing, which is not my favorite. Um, and it, yeah, I, like I like that kind of thing when it's really well done. And this one is only kind of well done in my opinion. Uh, it, yeah, I'm like two thirds of the way through. It's becoming a bit of a slog. It's not the book I'm reaching for at any time of the day. It's like, oh yeah, I better read another chapter of that. So yeah, we'll see once I'm done. Um, the other shortlister that I'm in the middle of and I'm enjoying a lot more is Flights by Olga Tokarczuk. Now this book was the most difficult to get. I had to pay like 33 Canadian dollars for this paperback. And these, I mean, people like these Fitzcarraldo Royal Blue editions, but look, they're already, this is quite new. I did take it on my trip, but I didn't read it much in Toronto and it's already looking quite beat up. So I'm not really impressed with the durability, but I'm impressed with the book. And I went into it with some trepidation because it's um, another one of these mixes of nonfiction and fiction and memoir and like fragments and sort of short stories, but sort of essays. So I was like, okay, <laughs> is this going to be like Bluets by Maggie Nelson? Um, which I did not like at all. Uh, is it going to be like The White Book by Han Kang, which totally bored me. Uh, and it is like those in some way, but this one works so much better for me. I can't really pinpoint why yet because I'm only on page 85 and I have a ways to go. But it is a mix of short stories, little fragments that appear to be sort of from the author's life, but whether they actually are or not, I don't know. Um, there is sort of a loose theme of travel. Uh, what it means to travel, what it means to be a species that like migrates and travels all over the world. Um, yeah, so I, I don't have much to say yet, but I, I'm enjoying it a lot more than I thought. This is a book that I'm reaching for, uh, you know, at different times of the day. And this is the one I want to be reading right now. And um, then the final one on the short list for me will be Vernon Subutex. So I just got this in the mail. Quite impressed. I ordered this from Blackwell's in the UK and it came, I think in 11 business days they promised 10 to 15 so that's great definitely would order from there again so um now here's our here's the lovely author photo <laughs> uh and the impression i have of this one before reading it is that it's going to be like a french urban welsh and i love urban welsh so i'm just anticipating lots of sex and drugs and rock and roll and i can't wait to get into it um so that will pretty much do it i think for my Man Booker International Prize reading. Uh, I don't, I'm probably not going to attempt to finish the long list just because a lot of the books are very difficult to get here and I don't necessarily want to pay, you know, $20 for ebooks or $30 or $40 for um, paperback books you know. Uh, but I am looking forward to uh, the announcement. It's been really fun following this prize and following other people who are following it. So let me know if you are reading along at all, how you're doing, where you're at. Uh, and I will link to a few things below, some of my written reviews, and, and that's it. Thanks for watching.